Hi, Dr. Ariane from The Movement Paradigm. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about autoimmune disease. So what are the things that can drive autoimmune disease and most importantly, how you can hopefully prevent it? So it is estimated that since 1980, we've gone from 22 million cases of autoimmune disease per year to up to 47 million. So it is clearly on the rise and is clearly something that we need to address because our immune health is everything. So let's talk about four key things that contribute to autoimmune disease. Number one, and perhaps the most important, is our gut. So leaky gut is associated with autoimmune disease, and leaky gut is also referred to as intestinal permeability. So so oftentimes we need three key things for an autoimmune disease to present itself, a triggering event, a predisposition, and leaky gut. So when we have leaky gut, think of it as our intestinal lining where we have these tight junctions held together by a protein called zonulin. When we have disruptions to this intestinal barrier from a variety of reasons, from toxins to our food choices to stress, to lack of sleep and so on can all affect this barrier. And so when that happens, when where we are supposed to be digesting and absorbing our nutrients from our food in our small intestine, if we have this intestinal permeability, now we have undigested food and perhaps toxins and bacteria moving into the bloodstream where now our immune system becomes more reactive. It's detecting that this is a danger and so it's going to react to whatever it's presented with. And so what happens is now we have an immune response that could present for one person as knee pain and that could present as to another person as an autoimmune disease. While we're on the same topic of the gut, in the same token, gut bacteria is one of the things that can predispose us to autoimmune disease. There's very specific bacteria that are linked with autoimmune disease. For example, Prevotella is associated with RA, Mycobacterium is associated with Crohn's and RA, and Fusobacterium is associated with systemic sclerosis. So there are really specific correlations with these increased opportunistic bacteria that could be associated with excessive or persistent inflammation and could present for an immunocompromised person autoimmune disease. Number two is pollution and or smoking. So this type of constant toxic load is something that can predispose us. Number three is toxins. So this could present as, let's say, mold exposure. This could present as cleaning chemicals. This could also present as things that we're exposed to in our day-to-day -day life, such as face, facial products, skin products, and so on. So what are the things that you can do to prevent autoimmune disease? So just because you have a predisposition does not mean you have a genetic blueprint for life. That is the most important thing to remember. There are lots of things that are within your control. The first is definitely going to be addressing any type of gut dysbiosis. So in essence, if we're thinking from a preventative standpoint is eating a whole food diet full of lots of diversity, fiber sources that are going to feed the microbiome, that are going to feed this beneficial bacteria, prevent overgrowth of these not so good bacteria, and really create balance and homeostasis in our gut. Limiting toxic exposure. So you can make very small changes such as, for example, going on the EWG Environmental Working Group website. They have an app as well. You can begin to assess the current products that you're using and then just take one product at a time and see if you can and find a safer product. So you can take your shampoo, put your shampoo, type your shampoo in there, you can scan it and you can say, okay, it's really, really toxic. So let me see if I can find another option that would be safer for me to use on a daily basis. If you have some other exposure, let's say to mold and, and you're suspicious of that, you do wanna make sure you get that evaluated and hopefully treated appropriately if necessary. Managing stress in your nervous system. So you can please check out all of my vagus nerve exercises, but we wanna remember that the vagus nerve is our main neural connection out of three connections of the gut and the brain. So when we can begin to really balance our digestion and our rest and digest responses, we can bring homeostasis to the body, which is going to be a safeguard against a lot of things. So if, if we tend to run on, on high gear all the time, it's going to be really important to find time and make time. I always say build it into your schedule to downregulate. So that could be something like going for a walk, that could be doing a vagus nerve exercise, that could be calling a friend, but really taking the time and the effort to make that happen. If necessary, you may need to do some type of detoxification. So we're not talking about green smoothies 
and, and things like that. But we are thinking about healthy detoxification pathways. So that could include forms of something like a sauna or Epsom salt bath. There could be things like that that may be necessary and appropriate for some people at some times, depending on where you are on your journey. That is something you definitely want to speak to a health provider about and make sure that you're doing the right things for you at the right time. <laughs> uh, because if you're not prepared for detoxification, then you could have a really, really intense response. So in essence, there are so many things that you can do to mitigate the potential autoimmune disease. Healing your gut is going to be by far the most important thing, but to heal your gut, you need all of the things. You need movement, you need nervous system regulation, you need optimal sleep. So I don't want to miss any of those today, but you need all of those to make sure that you are healing your body, healing your gut, healing your mind to prevent autoimmune disease. So I hope that was helpful. If it was, give it a like and a share and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Movement Paradigm for weekly tips on mindset, nutrition, and movement. And if you need help on your journey, we would love the opportunity. So please reach out for a discovery session. Thank you.